Hello and welcome to this week's makeover. This week we're going to be doing an ombre blend on a beautiful cedar chest. This lane cedar chest was in wonderful condition other than a loose base. After securing the boards and adding a new backboard, she was ready to bring inside. I found this gorgeous chest at the local Goodwill. Believe it or not, they had her priced at only $35. I'm going to guess that's because of the condition of the top and the fact that she was super wobbly. This chest has beautiful hardware, which I'm totally going to keep. I'm not changing that at all. The top has some veneer issues and inside is the original key and documents. So other than fixing that base, which I've already done, and the cosmetic issues on the top of the chest, she is in very good condition and ready for paint. I always feel like it's my lucky day when that key is included inside. So I grabbed my Dixie Belle mud and I started to repair that loose veneer right there on the top of the lid. And then I noticed a problem. It began flaking off even more. So I removed the hardware and removed all of the loose veneer off of the top of the piece. I cleaned the entire piece with white lightning and actually removed that decorative trim on the front base of the piece as well. It was kind of damaged and I really didn't like the look. I plan on replacing it with gorgeous Would You Bend. So you actually do have a couple of options when it comes to minor veneer repair. You can either remove it entirely like I'm doing and then fill it in with Dixie Belle's mud, or you could get a syringe filled with wood glue, apply the wood glue into the cracks and then press it down and hold it with a clamp. For me, I find it easier to just remove all the loose veneer. Get your fingernail up underneath there, make sure there's nothing that is gonna flake off or cause any bubbling when you add any paint or moisture to the piece. After it's all picked off, you are ready to go. I use my Dixie Belle mud in white just to fill in that entire missing area. I overfill a little bit so that when I sand it, I can sand it back completely flat. Dixie Belle mud is a water soluble product. It's a water-based product. So if you wanted to have that extra insurance that your mud is going to stay put, you can seal it with boss or clear coat before you begin to paint or gel stain. My plan for the top of this cedar chest is to use gel stain. So I like to apply my gel stain fairly thick. I'm not planning on having any wood show through, so it will cover the entire surface, including the area where I applied the mud. You can use a hand sander or you can just use your own hand with sandpaper to make this pretty smooth. I like to use my little mouse sander. It just gets the job done pretty quick. So sand it back to flat and then you are ready for your next step in the project. So since the plan is to stain the top and paint the base, I wanted to use my all-in-one silk paint for this job. I'm applying black sands to the entire base of this project. Why did I choose black sands? Well, because it has a built-in primer. This piece down here at the bottom of my, my little chest, you can see this area right here, had a very weathered kind of shabby applique. I was not a fan. I was not a fan of the shape of it, the cheapness of the look, and I thought it uh, needed to be taken off. So I got out my spatula and took off that piece right here. Now you can see that there's still a little bit of roughness here. I didn't bother taking that off or sanding that back because the plan is, dun, 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 would you bend? Would you bend moldings? So what I did was went to my stash of would you bend moldings and I went through a couple different ones. There's this really cute little one with roses. I was like, oh, that would fit. I could put that there, that would be cute. But then I was like, hmm, too small, too small. So then I had this one, it has like more roses in the bottom. It has kind of like a, I guess like a little curly cue with some little leaves on it. And then I was like, well, that would work. I could do that. Like this is a totable doable option. This was very similar to the size of the piece that was already on the front. So then I looked at it and I was like, eh, that's okay. But yo, you know, I like to be a little extra. 
I like to be a little bit uh, fancy pants, right? A little fancy pants. So I went back to the stash <laughs> and I go to this big bad Mac Daddy. Look at that guy right there. That is like like a whole arm's length of gorgeous would you bend. Da, da, da. And it is going to fit right here, right perfect. And we are going to just paint over top of it and it's gonna look like part of this curly, gorgeous piece, okay? So we have two parts today. We're gonna add this would you bend. And if you're looking for this would you bend, it's would you bend number 1372.48. I mean, hello, why, why such a big number? <laughs> but it is what it is. And once again, that is would you bend number 1372.48. Screenshot it if you need it. There you go, now you have it. So I'm gonna teach you all about would you bend and how to apply a very large molding to the bottom of this piece. Now, that's not all we're gonna work on today, because like I said, it's prep day. We're gonna make this beauty really like a, a unique piece, like a one-of-a-kind piece. So the hardware I'm gonna keep, okay, because you know that I'm a big fan of original hardware on a piece. It has these two big kind of, what you call, they're fake keyholes. I mean, I would call it a keyhole, but it's totally fake. There's no actual keyhole here. It's just decorated like that. And I, I do dig the color. I actually like this kind of burnished brass color. So it has two big keyholes, one here, one here, and the original hardware right there. Obviously all decorative because this chest opens from the top. So in my head, I'm like, what can I do to like take this to another level? Because we're already going to get fancy pants by putting this ginormous would you bend on the bottom. I was like, let's do a raised stencil, right? So I went through all my stencils and I thought, let's use the brand new Songbirds. Have you seen this one yet? This is a brand new stencil from the Bells and Whistles line. This is called Songbirds. It is a Mylar stencil. It is quite large, 35.5 by 45.7. And that is in centimeters, y'all, because I'm Canadian. If you want it in inches, it's a 14 by 18. I always say the centimeters. It just sounds, I don't know, more like home to me. <laughs> so we're gonna take this. We're gonna place it on here. We're gonna find the correct placement and we're gonna do a raised stencil together. So let's do that first. One, two. Okay, let's do it. So if you're coming in late, my name is Melissa. I am the owner and artist here at the Top Drawer and I'm also a Dixie Belle brand ambassador. That means that uh, I get to hang out with y'all and do fun and fabulous things while painting live. And uh, I love it. I love my job. I love connections and making friends. So welcome. If you're a new watcher, drop it in the comments below. If you're joining me again because you come hang out with me every Wednesday, thanks. Welcome back. Here's a closer up view of this beautiful Songbirds stencil. Can you see how cute that is? Super pretty, right? Super pretty. And actually, it's funny. I painted that piece, but there was no stencil on it. It's a mock-up. That piece was painted in anchor in the Silk Olive Mineral line as well. I'm a big fan of silk paint. Okay, so what do we got here? Got a big chunky stencil, y'all. So what are we going to do? We're going to take this panel. Can you see how this panel kind of sticks out? My, my goal is to decorate this panel and this panel, right? And then what's gonna happen is when I paint over top of it after it's dried, it's gonna give a beautiful raised detail to these two front panels on this piece. You wanna come in a little bit closer and I'm gonna aim you down so you can see exactly what I am up to today. So I also have on the floor my Dixie Belle mud in white. Why white you ask? Well, because it was the closest one to my hot little hands. It doesn't matter what color of mud I'm gonna use um, because I'm gonna be painting over top of it. This mud comes in white, brown and black. And I'm going to tell you a little secret about this mud. Did you know that you're supposed to keep it in the fridge? That way it doesn't get all moldy. <laughs> it doesn't get moldy. It's really wet in there. So I keep this in the fridge. Obviously people know to not eat this. The other little handy dandy tip about mud is that you should not wash this down the drain. Did you know that? I have multiple TikToks of me literally taking my stencil outside and blasting it with the hose. And what that's going to do is then allow me to clean my stencil without washing any mud down the drain. You don't want to clog up your pipes, okay? So I've got my stencil, I've got mud, I've got my handy dandy spatula, and I've got painter's tape. What's the painter's tape going to do? It's going to be my extra hands-on um, because I'm going to have to hold the stencil quite still while I'm working, right? So have you done a raised stencil before? Have you? It's a lot of fun. And I've been doing a lot of them lately. I don't know why I seem to be on a raised stencil kick. Um, oh, I have a piece right behind me. Do you want to see what I did the last time? So we did raised stencil on this little cutie behind me right here. Can you see that? This is Mojave silk paint. 
in that gorgeous, gorgeous golden yellow. And we did a stencil together on this piece. Do you remember this? We used the brand new stencil, I believe it was two weeks ago we did this together, or a week ago. And now that piece is finished. I'm waiting to take her to the shop. But isn't that raised stencil gorgeous when you paint over top of it? So beautiful, right? It just gives like an extra little kick, like an extra little, a little uh, fancy pants that we all need. We all need some fancy pants in our life. So let's show you how we're gonna do that raised stencil over here with the beautiful Songbirds uh, Mylar stencil from the Bells and Whistles line. Okay, so this is just my base color of paint. Remember, I did silk so that I could stop any bleed through that might come through on my piece. So you need to now decide do you want your birds to go this way or do you want your birds to go this way? I don't know. I feel like this is the way they should go. They need to look this way. Now, the next thing is the stencil is only going on this raised panel right here. This is just my base coat, right? This is not what I'm painting my piece in. So I don't care if I get a little bit of mud here or there. After this dries, I'll be using a soft finishing pad to remove any excess and keep it quite flat. So I need to think about this panel and how I want to place the birds, right? Because once you put your stencil on there, your raised stencil, that's obviously where you're gonna leave it. So I recommend taking the hardware out and keeping it on hand to see how it's going to sit. I like this bird, but I also like this bird. If I want them both, I'm gonna to have to move it over a little bit to the left, and then this would be right here. I would still get these flowers on the board because I can see this edge is coming up, right? So I would get the bird, that one down here, that one down here, and it doesn't have to be the same on the other side, right? Because you're painting over top of it, you're using this more as a, like a decorative kind of a style. Okay, so that I like. I like this placement right here. So I'm going to tape up my stencil. What's gonna happen is it's gonna help me hold it still while I'm applying my Dixie Belle mud with my spatula. So let's get it nice and flat. You can see it's gonna come right down here. I'm gonna get the edge of this little branch. There's gonna be a tiny branch here, some leaves. I'm loving it. Let's tape this like that. Okay, so now my stencil is going to stay here. I could tape it on the top, I could tape it on the bottom, it really doesn't matter. It's gonna stay for this panel that we're working on. I have my spatula. I did have paper towel, here it is. So I can wipe off my excess and we are going to begin. Are you ready? Do I have any questions before I begin on my race stencil design that I can answer? I have my undivided attention, I'm looking at the screen. Anything, I know there's a tiny delay. Show me some love, throw me some hearts. I'll take those, I can see them, but I am sitting close enough that I can see if you have any questions. Okay, remember this is a water soluble product. So after I do have it dry, what's gonna happen is I'm going to sand it back to like a nice flat, right? A nice flat, and then I'm going to seal it most likely in boss. By sealing it in boss or a clear coat, what's gonna happen is you're going to seal in that mud so that it doesn't move when I come in with my heavy duty ombre blending, right? I want it to stay there. And because this product is a water soluble product, if I didn't seal it and I sprayed a ton of paint and I really mashed in with my brush, I take the option of like moving my, my mud. I don't want it to move, I want it to stay there. So I'm gonna seal it most likely in clear just to make sure that it is adhered to the piece. Now while I have you here, let's do this part together but then, tell me, weigh in, if you think I should add it to the middle faux drawers as well. Let's see, hello from Washington, how are you today? Okay, so this is a plastic spatula. Why do I like plastic? Because it's a little bit more gentle. You know, you can just kind of get away with pushing a little harder. It's not metal, you're not gonna scratch anything. I'm just gonna jump right in and grab some mud. Okay, I always like to start in the middle. So you're gonna see me kind of like hold it flat. By holding it flat, I'm making sure that it's flat to the piece. And I'm just gonna start to push my mud out. This does not have to be perfect, people. This does not have to be perfect because you are just creating a little bit of a raised design on the front of your piece and you still are gonna be sanding it back, right? By sanding it back, that's gonna make sure that it's nice and flat and getting it ready for paint. So I'm just pushing that mud. These Marlar stencils are thick. If, I, if you had to ask me, I'd say they're like two millimeters maybe, maybe a little bit less. But by having just that little bit of thickness to them, you're able to do this raised stencil design really easily. Make sure you're getting close to the edges. I can always come back in with my sandpaper 
and take it off the edges where it's not supposed to be after I get it on. But it's harder to add it after it's dry. So I just really want to get down here to the edge. And if you feel like your, your spatula is kind of getting mucky, you can just kind of like rub it off on there. Okay. And again, continue to make sure you've covered all of your edges. I'm trying to keep it smooth, pushing it down as I move along. Just covering anywhere where this raised stencil is hitting on the panel. So no, you're not gonna see like this whole image, but you're gonna get like a really good raised part that's just gonna showcase these two panels because this is a, a beautiful chest, right? I feel like it's gonna sit front and center in somebody's bedroom maybe, or like maybe by a door where they would sit down and put shoes on. It's beautiful inside. Whoever had this piece, I picked it up at the local Goodwill, but whoever had this piece kept it in really great condition. The inside smells beautifully of cedar. I'm a big fan of that smell. It's not damaged in any way other than that base that I had to kind of build up and resecure. Nine times out of 10, these pieces have, you know, missing keys or the shelf that's on the interior doesn't work properly because people have opened it and broken it, but it is 100% perfect. So there's that one little bit down there that I need to add some mud to. Okay, so now I've covered, this is the, set, the shape of my panel, right? You can see the other side, you can see how that shape is. I'm gonna take off the excess amount of my scraper. I'm just gonna one more time, make sure that this is even, like the, I feel like the big bird that's in the middle just needs a little bit more, more mud. You can always come back in after and sand it, like I said, so that it's all the same consistency. So if you overfill it just that little bit, it's better than underfilling your raised stencil, if that makes sense. Just smoothing all of my edges. And getting this design on the piece. So have you tried this stencil yet? Has anybody tried this brand new stencil? It just was released a couple weeks ago from the Bells and Whistles line. If you tried it, drop it in the comments below. I'd love to see if anybody's tried it yet. I like to uh, I like to see other inspiration, what everybody else is up to. All right, so that I'm happy with. So I'm gonna wipe off my spatula because I'm gonna start again on the other side, right? And we're gonna remove this piece. Why do I remove my mud when it's wet? Well, I wanna take this off when it's wet. Number one, I need to use it on the other side. But number two, I wanna take it off when it's wet so that it doesn't dry hard and then maybe stick to where I don't want it to stick. So I like to remove my stencil when it's wet. So now, did I go over the edges? Sure, I did a little bit. You can run your finger along and take off that excess mud. Obviously, I'm gonna be painting over top of this, but it's really kind of a great design for you to be able to see how it looks <laughs> because the white is a great contrast to the black sands, isn't it? But I'm gonna use this as a raised stencil design today. And then obviously once it's dry, I'll be sanding it back and painting over top of it. Isn't that great? Isn't that cool? I really like this stencil. Okay, now here's the ticket. I'm gonna use this stencil again right now on the other side. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of water and my paper towel and just kind of get rid of some of the excess amounts of mud that's on my stencil, right? Because you're not washing this down the drain. I, I would, if I wasn't on camera, take this direct outside and just hose it off. Um, but right now I just don't want a ton of mud sticking on my stencil because I'm gonna replace it over on the other side. So I just wiped it off with a little bit of mud, or a little bit of mud, <laughs> a little bit of water, and a little bit of paper towel, so we can take it over to the other side and then do it over here as well, okay? So let's move along. Moving down the line, move all of my accompaniments here and get over here. Okay, so now I have two panels. I don't need them to match, right? I'm gonna put you back so you can see both of them. Dun, dun, dun. Perfecto. I don't need to line this up exactly. Do I, if I, if I did anything, I wouldn't make sure that this panel matches this panel. I want them to be a little bit different. Like I want this panel 
to not be the same as the other panel. So for me, let's move it around and see how I want the placement to be, okay? So it's obviously the same hardware on the other side, this, this beautiful big keyhole right here. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my gosh, so pretty. I'm liking all the fancy things. So I need to look at the bird. So this is the placement I did on the other side. Let's move it so that I get a different style. Like maybe, see that lower bird? See this one down here? He's not on, right here by my thumb? He is not on the other side. So I feel like if I maybe make him the centerpiece, that would be a nice contrast, right? I think so. So I'm gonna look at it, lay it out, make sure that my edges, because remember I'm going right to the edge, come over, and I'm gonna tape. Perfect. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so now my stencil has been moved over. I've got a new design, right? He's here, his tail comes all the way to the bottom, but he's gonna be the focus of this piece, whereas that one has the other big bird on the other side. Catch my drift? All right, so now I'm gonna go back in with my Dixie Bell Mud and my spatula. And if you guys wanna see me finish this project, you're gonna to have to follow me on all my social media. Um, what will be happening is I will most likely be making a YouTube video so that anybody can watch the full entire process and you can come join that next week. But for now, come, oh, I got the mud under the thing. For now, you're gonna have to come follow me on my own Facebook. Look, I got too much mud, I wasn't paying attention. Talking instead of working. So I'm wiping off that excess that I got underneath there. I'm gonna have to wipe it off the back of the stencil too. I need more hands! Let me get my water. Hold up. Time out. You know what, let's take the whole thing off and wipe it off and start again. We will, we will learn from my mistakes. First of all, I need to get this off the back of the stencil because I got it all on here. So let's take that off. That's better. Now, remember I told you this is water soluble? This is gonna be really easy to clean up. All you need to do is wet it and wipe it off. I got a little bit over here too, but I don't care. So I'm just wiping off what I did and starting over from a flat base because I moved my stencil and that mud got up underneath it. I don't want that to happen. So now I'm just going to take off that extra mud and start over again. Take two. Take two people. Okay, so let me see if I've got any more on the back of this little piece of stencil before I stick it back on there. Tiny bit, not a lot. It's just a tiny bit. Okay, we're good. Let's try this again. This time, I'll be quiet. No more talking, only working. I want to line up this bird about there. I want that whole bird on the piece. Stay. Stay, stay, stay. Okay, now, now, let's start over again. Take two. Turn the camera. Take my mud and just gently start to rub it down. It also helps too, once you start to get the mud on your piece, it holds that stencil so it's not as like slippery. If it helps, you could always put your stencil flat on the floor with the, your, like, your piece sideways. I've seen people do that as well, but it's honestly, it's that easy. It's water soluble, you make a boo-boo, you just peel it off, wipe it off and start again. It's not bad. But another hand would be great if I had three arms instead of two you know, my job would be a little bit easier. So I'm just pushing that mud through the stencil. Like I said, it's not a, like a thick stencil, but it's definitely thicker than, say, the silk screen. This wouldn't be a job for mud with the silk screen. That's much too flat to push through that little screen. It would be way too difficult. I only like thin paints when I use silk screen stencils, but for these guys, the mud works perfect. Okay, so that is the whole area. I'm gonna come down here, make sure I got his little tail. Remember, I'm gonna kind of even it out. It's okay if it's not 100% even because I'm gonna be sanding it flat. I'm just making sure that I got in close to all of my edges. And then we can take him back. So I'm gonna be using my gray sponge you know the little gray soft sponges? I'll show you mine, I'm literally sitting on it. I can feel it under my leg. That's what I use once my mud is dry to just gently sand back to make sure that it's nice and flat. But I'm gonna take this piece and be adding texture anyways with paint. I'm using my Best Dang brush 
in an ombre blend to accent the entire thing. So I will definitely have texture on it. Okay, perfection. Now we're good. Ready to peel it off? Dun, dun, dun. So now I'll take this outside, okay, and I will hose it, literally hose it in my driveway with my hose to get it nice and clean because you don't want to be washing that mud down the drain. This is the sponge that I use to sand it back once it's dry. I'm just going to run my finger over top of these edges. And what that's going to do is just kind of take the extra little bits of mud off. I can wait till it's dry and sand it, but for now, it's not hard to just wipe it while it's wet and pull off any of the extra. What do you think? Super cute, right? I think it's just going to add enough of a, like a bit of a bling, right? Remember, this is going to be painted over. This is a raised stencil design that I will be, you know, painting over on the piece. So let's push it back. Let's move the camera back and let's look at both sides together. What do we think? That looks so good, y'all. That looks so good. Wouldn't this be great if you painted a piece and then came with that stencil as like a shadow stencil and maybe some gold or some moonshine metallics? Oh my gosh, it would be so pretty, right? You think it's really cute? Thank you, Patty. Okay, so let's continue. Yes, I got some mud places where it shouldn't be. I'm not worried because I'm gonna be painting over it. Let's talk about would you bend. All right, let's move this out of the way and apply my would you bend. So after my mud dries and after I get this would you bend piece, <laughs> I've got mud everywhere. After I get it on my piece, what's gonna happen is I am then ready for paint. Let me just get some of this mud off my spatula so that I don't lose it. You know what happens? I like dirty things up so bad that I literally have to throw them in the garbage because there's stuff all over them. So don't wash your mud down the drain. Make sure you wipe your products clean and you can reuse them as necessary. All right, so let's talk would you bend. Would you bend? This is your bendy wood. This is exclusive to the Dixie Bell paint page. This would you bend comes on a hard board. See, see this little board right here? Because it's kind of like a little bit of a fragile creature. When it's in a state where it's not warm and you're transporting it, if somebody were to bend this or, or throw it around when they were sending it to you, it could get broken. I mean, a knife would be helpful, but that's not something I prepared for today. So they wrap it up and there's two of these together. There are two would you bends come on one board. Once again, this is would you bend number 1372.48. Got it? Got it? Good. So I'm gonna take one and put it aside and we're just gonna be attaching one would you bend to this piece. So why do I like would you bends? Well, number one, they help me replace where all of this broken trim was down here. Remember, there was a broken curly cue down here. He just kind of looked tacky. I didn't like him. We're taking this piece to the next level with raised stencils and would you bend design. You have a couple options, okay, when you, when you place it. I can go a little bit lower so like it hides the entire piece, but I don't think I want to do that because if it gets bonked around, I feel like it could, you know, be damaged. So I'm going to be coming up. So it's just that the scallop piece right here is a little bit lower. I think that that will be a good match for the curviness of the birds for, you know, this ornate hardware that we have on the piece. And then also the kind of cute little feet, the little curly feet. So how do you put a wood you bend on? Well, remember they came on a board, so it looks pretty flat, right? This looks pretty flat to me. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to still heat this up. I am still going to heat my would you bend before I apply it, even if to the naked eye, like it looks straight, because you want to ensure that this is flat and it's going to sit flat to the piece. If you were say applying your would you bend around a curvy surface, when you heat it up, it becomes completely curvable, malleable, movable, and you can bend it and twist it around edges and corners. It saves the day. Honestly, would you bend is like jewelry for your piece. It's one of my favorite things. So I'm gonna put this in the floor and I have a heat gun here on the floor, okay? I also have tape because that would you bend is large, right? It's like as big as my whole arm. So I'm going to have to tape it to hold it to the surface because I'm, I'm vertical here, right? The piece is sitting straight up. Since I'm vertical, I wanna make sure that I'm gonna get it on there and it's not going to move. So let's get our tape ready for our would you bend because once I heat it up and I put my wood glue on and stick it on, I'm gonna need another hand to help me hold it still until it's adhered to the piece, okay? The glue that I'm using today is a wood glue. It's always recommended to use wood glue when you're using 
any would you bend products but it doesn't matter what brand or kind this just happens to be one that is almost it's almost had it i don't know where the lid is anymore surprise so now i just stuck a brush in there and take out what i need you're also going to need a heat gun or a hair dryer or i've even seen it where people lay their would you bend on a griddle and what that's going to do is heat up your would you bend enough because this is this is thick look how thick it is so it's gonna heat it up enough to be bendy. So let's heat it anyways, because I wanna ensure that it's gonna be flat when it goes on my piece. I want it to be as flat as I can to this surface. So I'm heating up my you bend. I'm gonna do the back and the front because this is a thick you bend. The thicker the you bend, the more heat you need, okay? I'm just making sure that it's going to stay nice and flat. So heating it is going to give you that chance to make sure that it's staying flat. So now I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to apply glue with my broken glue jar to the entire piece of the backing. And I'm going to heat it up again right before I stick it on just to make sure that it's completely flat and ready to go. I really, really, really need new glue, people. I mean... <laughs> this is craziness. So I'm just gluing the whole back, getting the glue on the piece, and also glue all over myself. I'll hold it up and show you once I get it on, okay? Just let me work with my my empty glue. Ooh. You see, this is a lesson, people. If you put the lid back on things where it's supposed to be, you're not going to have a problem with uh, using it again. But I seem to have a problem even when I put stuff in the fridge. I don't even put the lid on. It's like my husband's biggest pet peeve is that he takes things out of the fridge or off the counter and hopefully he doesn't shake them because I guarantee I didn't put the lid back on. I don't know what it is, obviously. It's a sickness. <laughs> I can't do it. All right, all of my glue is on here. A little bit more at the top, right where it's quite thick, quite heavy. But once this goes on, what happens is you paint over top of it and you're good to go because it is going to look like it was made for this piece. There's nothing that uh, looks better than a painted would you bend. So you can paint it before, uh, before you put it on or after. I'm gonna be painting it after obviously because I want it to get on my piece the entire way. So see, there's my glue. So let's give it one more quick blast. Making sure that it's nice and flat because when you heat it up, it's bendable. And I'm gonna put my face right in front of the camera because I really wanna line up this little seashell to my piece. So holding it and pressing it, the only part that's gonna be coming down from my piece here is the seashell part, right? This little scallop bit right here is the only part that's gonna be coming off. So let me look at it while I have it right here. I'm gonna back up, make sure that it's center. I'm gonna line it up with this little lane lock. Now, I have on the floor a clip to help me hold it. And then I'm gonna tape it up, okay? So now that this is on here, it's gonna stay there. We're gonna blast it again with the heat gun, right? One more blast with the heat gun, and I'm gonna push it at the same time. What that's gonna do is ensure that it's nice and flat. So this, there you go, see me pushing? See me holding it and pushing it down? is making sure that all of this would you bend is gonna become one with my piece of furniture. So now that broken yucky trim that was on the bottom is covered with a brand new would you bend. Let me just double check. I need to put my head down to make sure it's even Steven. I don't want it to be lower on one side than the other. And then you're, you're ready to paint over it right away. Like I could literally take off my tape right now and start painting if I wanted to. It's that simple. Now we've added all our embellishments, our beautiful would you bend, and our gorgeous songbird stencil. Let's work on the top of this piece. I use Dixie Belle's No Pain Gel Stain quite often. It's probably one of the items that I use the most out of all of my products. Since this is an oil-based product, I like to use this to cover any damages on the top of my piece. Wear gloves because if it gets in your fingernails, it's never coming out. I like to use an applicator pad to apply my gel stain. So you can see I'm applying it in the direction of the wood grain and I'm going right over top of that area where I have my mud repair.
You can apply as many layers as you like. Just make sure that you wait your 12 to 24 hours in between coats of gel stain so that your gel stain cures enough that you're not pulling it back when you're applying your second coat. So you can see that I'm wiping it on in the direction of the wood grain. I also make sure to go around all of the edges. So once I get that first coat on, I'm just gonna gently wipe it so that it stays uniform across the top of my project. Okay, so this is where we're at now. I was painting this live yesterday, you just saw the video, and I am back today. I have used my sanding sponge, which I'm sitting on because it's nice and squishy. <laughs> it's a very soft sanding sponge to sand back this mud, okay? Because when I apply it, it's quite thick, it's a little bit textured. I wanted it to be a little bit more smoothed out. So this mud has been sanded lightly in order to you know, smooth it down. I've checked my edges, make sure that my mud is not coming off the edges anywhere. And we are gonna get ready for paint and we're gonna paint right over top of the songbird stencil. So let's hang out and get a little messy and play with some paint. I'm going for a neutral ombre blend. You're gonna see me layering a lot of the paint and pulling it back and then maybe doing some dry brush over top of the, the stencil here but it's just paint. If I don't like it, I can always paint over top of it. Let's get ready to have some fun. So here's the ombre plan for this piece. I like to come in with the darkest tone. For me, I like to use that dark color to get into all the grooves and all the edges of the piece so that when I'm building up those layers, the darkness stays in all the creases. It's easy to paint right over top of that Would You Bend applique on the front of the piece. I like to just damp my brush a little bit more, making sure that paint gets right into all the grooves. It's a thick molding, so using a kind of watery paint really helps it get into all the cracks and make sure it's covered. So this darkest tone was applied all around the Would You Bend, around the cracks, and the edges of the birds as well, just in case when I come back with my ombre blending, the edges of the birds stay a little bit darker. Okay, here's where it starts to get a little bit messy. Now, don't judge me on the way that I'm just really slapping the paint on here. My plan is to make the lightest areas, which are the areas that are the most 3D and sticking out close to me. If you get it, I'm kind of working from dark to light, right? Like, so the lightest areas are on the raised pieces, the raised panels. You'll see me use a heat gun here and there. All that I'm doing is just drying that paint. So when I come in and do my ombre blending, that paint stays where I put it. Okay, let's show you how I do my ombre blending in real time. I'm not gonna speed this up because I get a lot of comments about how people like to see the entire process. I'm using my best dang brush and on the floor I have paper towel. What I'm going to do is keep that brush damp and wipe it off as it becomes saturated with paint. 
you're gonna see me kind of keep a slight hand. I'm not pushing really hard. I'm just making sure that the definition line between the paint colors becomes blurred. On the bigger surfaces, you will see me use a circular motion to blend that paint together. So I'm starting with the dark tones on each panel and bringing the lightness into the middle. I'm going to use that small circular motion building up those layers, moving my paint around, and basically getting it just to the area and the, the desired spots that I want the lightest paint to be. What's going to happen is that lightest paint in the middle is going to start to sit on the most 3D parts of the birds. Remember, there's a raised stencil right there on that panel. So the lighter hand that I use, the lighter amount of paint that's going to sit on the top of the birds, if that makes sense. You're also gonna see me later on in this process use a small chip brush to kind of drag a little bit of dry brush across the birds to make them stand out even more. So as you start to move your paint around with the best dang brush, you're able to come back in and apply more paint to the areas where you want an either darker or lighter effect. And this is really all about personal preference. You know, how much blending you wanna do, what's your desired look that you're trying to achieve with your piece. I really like an aged look, so I like to kind of darken the corners where the dirt would naturally accumulate. And I will be adding black wax to this piece, but really this paint is just kind of a, a mirage of sorts showing the definition of the 3D raised panels. Okay, so now my paint has dried enough to the point where I want to start adding some layers. I want to start adding some age to the piece. All I'm using is a chip brush and then the lightest color mixed in with a little bit more of the gray in order to create some raised detail on the front of that panel. You can see the birds and this is just highlighting them that little bit more. Obviously, I repeated the same process on the sides of the piece using that ombre blend with my best dang brush and pulling the colors together. I sealed the entire piece with my best dang wax and clear. This will allow me to build up some darker wax within the grooves. This best dang wax is a water-based product. What does that mean for me as an artist? Well, that means I'm able to layer it and build it up, but then also wipe it back. So I can apply it with a heavy hand and really get it stuck in the grooves in the areas where I want a darker aged surface. And then using a baby wipe or a paint wipe, you're able to pull back that wax and get the exact look that you're, you're trying to achieve. And obviously, my final touch is always gilding wax. I put gilding wax on every single piece. Gilding wax is always last for me because it's an oil-based product, it's going to cure on its own. I just like to get in there with a small artisan brush and touch all the corners. This is what's just gonna take your piece to the next level, make it shine, make it glow, and it looks so good in all the photos that you take at the end.
Don't forget to add a little bit of shine to that gorgeous would you bend. Now, when you're doing this on your would you bend piece, make sure to kind of pick your angle. So you're only gonna see me hit the top edges of that would you bend piece in order to give it its shine. Now you can see how that raised stencil completely accents the piece and just makes those panels stand out. I put back on the original hardware, I didn't even change it, and then I sealed the top gel stain with my gorgeous gator hide. This is going to give it some strength, a little bit of shine, and make it look like a million bucks. If you ask me to paint neutral, this is the look you're going to get. A little grungy, a little interesting, a tiny bit of shine on all the edges, and look at that would you bend. This piece now looks like a million dollars to me. I love it. This is my favorite way to paint. Interesting, grungy, and kind of a little bit different. So what do you think of the transformation? From kind of brown and boring to beautiful and classy. I staged her with a little bit of texture, a little bit of yarn, and some fur. Obviously, a touch of gold to accent that gilding wax, and she is all done. You cannot even see where that top of the piece was repaired.